Welcome back to the IDP Plus Ranking Show. My name is Nathan. I am here with my co-hosts, Johnny Freaking Fantasy and Brandon Lee TV. What's going on, guys? We're here to talk some top 50 wide receiver rankings. And this time, we're adding the rookies in. This is pre-draft. We don't know where people are going to fall. But for those that are you know, looking at... Uh, trading rookie picks or um, you know maybe you're having your your rookie drafts before uh, the draft you get a good idea of like where people where we're thinking these guys are gonna go as far as value for dynasty but before we get into that let me give my two co-hosts a chance to introduce themselves a little bit uh, before we take off here so let's start with you Johnny let everyone know where they can find you and what you're up to so if you haven't followed me already, you can find me on Twitter at Johnny Freak in F1. I've been doing a lot of uh, IDP plus trend, um, you know, groundwork. I've been doing research for it with my co-host Steve and producing that show on a weekly basis. So if you haven't checked out IDP plus trends, go ahead and do that. It's a show that we cover uh, all current events in the NFL. So I've been doing a lot of combine, offseason free agency, where these guys are going, what it means for their potential uh, fantasy values whether it be dynasty or redraft as well. So check me out uh, once again at Johnny freaking F1. I've been doing a lot of retweeting of the great work from the IDP plus team as well. And i uh, excited to talk some rookie wide receivers this week. Uh, Brandon, I'll pass it to you. Yes, sir. feels good to be back guys. What's up people. It's your boy, Brandon Blakeney, AKA Brandon Lee TV. You can find me on all social media at Brandon Lee TV. Uh, we are entrenched. In March Madness right now, so I got a lot of women's basketball content with the sport continuing to grow. You know, it's continuing to get a lot of spotlight, so definitely check out my stuff there on YouTube. And then you can catch my football stuff as well because there's no sleep for fantasy with IDP Plus covering you with articles and great video content like this. And shout out to my guy Johnny for taking time out to put together these rankings as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so before we jump into these rankings, just to let everyone know, uh, we are going to be juxtaposing Johnny's actual rankings with rankings from the site. And now if you want website rankings, you want IDP content, or even beyond that, because we are plus uh, offense and a lot of other things, there's some sports betting content on there. Uh, go to idpplus.com, become a subscriber. Uh, right now, for uh, utilizing the promo code mock draft, uh, you can get a, a monthly membership for $1 uh, for the first month, and that renews at $9.99 a month. Uh, but also, we just released last week, we kind of teased it on the show, uh, but we released on Monday our rookie draft guide. Uh, go and get grab this amazing guy that's put together uh, by our team. Uh, it's got over a hundred profiles. It's going to have, um, you know, a ton of rankings, uh, com uh, you know, positional com combination rankings, consensus, the, the whole shot, ADP, all of it. Uh, we update this thing every Friday leading to the NFL draft. Uh, and then we'll be updating it beyond so that it will have, um, you know, landing spot uh, information and everything you're going to need for your uh, rookie draft pre or post uh, NFL draft. So go there, grab a rookie guide, idpplus.com, and let's get into these rankings. So for those audio listeners, uh, we're going to start this off uh, with uh, Justin Jefferson, CeeDee Lamb, Jamar Chase, Amon Ross St. Brown, A.J. Brown, Michael Pittman, Tyreek Hill, D.J. Moore, Garrett Wilson, Brandon Ayuk, Chris Olave, Puka Nakua. That's 1 through 12 for Johnny freaking fantasy. Uh, and this first question really goes to Johnny, we're going to start this one off, uh, you know, right out the gate with Michael Pittman seems to have the biggest discrepancy uh, between these rankings. Why are you so high on him at number six versus IDP plus has him at 23? So I'll tell you what, for Michael Pittman, uh, when you're when you're talking about dynasty, a lot of people like to go with age. 
Um, you know, I think what Michael Pittman really does, he, he is young. He's 26 years old. He has that going for him. So I'm not worried about age with Michael Pittman. And he's just so darn consistent when he's out there. Uh, this season, he had 156 targets, which was actually ninth most in the entire league. He's a volume receiver. A lot of people believe in uh, Anthony Richardson there to, to help him continue to develop. And, and you know, I'm one of those believers as well. And actually, if you look at the first two weeks of the season, Michael Pittman with Anthony Richardson, uh, those first two games over weeks one and two, 23 targets, 16 catches, 153 yards and a touchdown. And maybe you're looking at his touchdowns with only four this past season. Uh, he only had four the season before and then six in 2021. Maybe that's an area that you're looking at and, and you know, you can make him uh, a little bit lower in the rankings based off that case. But at the same time, you know, like I said before, it's, it's not age is not a concern. Consistency is there. Uh, we think that Richardson's going to continue to to help the Colts be better, and and maybe Pittman too. Um, and I just think, you know, when you look at these guys later in the list, I could give you some risk with with uh, you know volatility with some of these guys. Olave, uh, even Marvin Harrison Jr. A lot of people like him in their top five or six, but. To me, he can go get drafted by the Patriots, and it's a different discussion. So right now I'm looking at bankability. Um, I don't think there's much volatility to Michael Pittman's game. He gives you that nice blend of age with production. So for me, I think to you know have him at 23 is low. Maybe to have him at six is a little bit high. But uh, like I said, offers dependability, and, and he's ripe for the age. He's right in his prime of his career. So I like Michael Pittman a lot. There we go. Brandon, wh what are your thoughts on this? Where where are you falling? Are you closer to the 6 or the 23 for Michael Pittman? Yeah, I wouldn't have him as high as 6, but I do think that he's in a good position to succeed with Anthony Richardson and the Colts bring him back, you know, made him unavailable for trades. So he's one of the franchise that believes that he is their number one option. So half the battle is just having the opportunity and having that potential of having the volume that he does um he's getting thrown to like a top 10 wide receiver that's for sure um you know it's just going to be up to him to produce more you know with those reps and um I like the age as well 26 still entering that prime of his career he's a big physical receiver and you know guys like that you know kind of in the mold of Mike Evans they age pretty well you know with uh being a receiver you know they're not completely dependent on speed He's a big physical guy that can really go up and get it, win a lot of jump balls. So I like that aspect of it as well. I don't think that he's produced enough to be top six right now, but that's not to say that he can't climb that, you know, with a healthy Anthony Richardson. And his really biggest competition probably is Josh Downs, another young receiver with the Colts who really built chemistry with um, – Anthony Richardson as well. It's probably his biggest competition for targets. So um, I probably have him more in like the 10, 15 range, but I get what Johnny is saying and seeing with the potential there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, going back to you, Brandon here with, uh, so Aaron Rodgers, uh, and this could be a bit of a joke, but might be running for vice president. <laughs> so if there is no, Aaron Rodgers in uh, in New York. Uh, do you still like Garrett Wilson uh, at that nine? And on IDPplus.com, we have him at 13, so still pretty high. What are your thoughts there on his dependability with uh, Rodgers? If Rodgers is there, Wilson's got the potential to be top five. Uh, just we've seen Aaron Rodgers' number one targets always be in the upper echelon of catches and touchdowns as well as he likes to throw that deep ball and Wilson's got some jets on him so I think the the upside is incredible the downside if Aaron Rodgers isn't there he's probably top 15 I mean we've seen him you know with Trevor Simeon as well as uh, Zach Wilson and he was still able to deliver and you know um be an offensive rookie of the year caliber player so I don't think his value is necessarily solely tied to Aaron Rodgers, but it is the difference between him being a top 15 guy and a potential top five guy. But I don't imagine a situation where Aaron Rodgers isn't playing football for the New York Jets next season or this season coming up. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and so, Johnny, when you were looking at these rankings, were you taking that into consideration at all of Aaron Rodgers not being there versus being there and trying to split the difference for Garrett Wilson? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Aaron Rodgers, I think if if he's there, it's only going to be for one more year. So uh, that's my big concern is, you know, regardless of, of Rodgers or somebody else, it's it's only a year, a matter of time before that happens. Uh, another thing that I don't know if a lot of managers see it like me, but, um, you know, what one thing about I'll give you an example of free agent signing Patrick Queen. As much as a, Patrick Queen is a great player in IDP, it kind of worries me going to Pittsburgh a little bit just because the Pittsburgh track record at linebacker doesn't really have that that tread, you know, to it. Uh, and a similar thing here in New York. I mean, when has the New York Jets have had a, a top five, top 10, you know, wide receiver? And that's kind of my doubt. It's, it's also based on the team um, that mm -hmm. he plays for. And, yeah, if he doesn't have a great quarterback, you know, he excelled a little bit with uh, Wilson even, you know, so I, I don't think it's an absolute floor. Uh, you know, I still think he has the potential. If he was on another team, uh, I think he could. his ceiling is even higher, and it's unfortunate that he's in the Jets. Uh, so I think that's his problem for me. I, I can't, you know, like Brandon said, if he does have Rogers, sure, he can make a top five case. But without him, which I think that's going to be the case, whether it be, you know, this year or next year. Um, yeah, I think he falls a little bit. So this is a this is a pick where a lot of people, if you look at other rankings out there, a lot of people are high on him, top eight guy. But to me, I wanted to knock him down uh, a little bit to to show that that you know cracks in the in the foundation for him. But I do think uh, there are some guys that you know Brandon Ayuk, uh, Chris Olave, Puka. These guys could you could have them ranked above him as well. This is tough. This is where I said Michael Pittman. I know what I'm going to get. Uh, these other guys, it can go, you know, multiple different ways. And, and it could, could be even better than Pittman, but it could be far worse, too, I think. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, Johnny, looking at this list and um, seeing where you ranked people and where IDPplus.com, give me an idea with uh, these 12 guys. Where's your surprise? You know, you had just kind of seen uh, this graphic just before the show. Um, but like, what stands out to you as like big differences? I think first off Pittman 23, you know, like Brandon said to have him at 15, if that was 15 and not a, a 23, then it's a different, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't pop out at the eye so much. So I think, uh, Michael Pittman is going to, you know, rise up the rankings a little bit there. And maybe if we meet in the middle, maybe it is a 12 to 15, but for right now, just the consistency that, you know, he gives me, uh, the dependability, that's why I have him higher. Now, a couple guys later on this list, Chris Olave is very youthful, had a great uh, start to his career so far. But at the same time, if they get Brian Thomas Jr., who I expect them to get in the first round, maybe, you know, Brian Thomas comes in there and, and shakes up the, you know, the uh, cadence a little bit. And maybe Brian Thomas can be that number one. I know right now, as it is, they only have uh, uh, A.T. Perry next to Chris Olave right now. That's the biggest threat, you know. So right now it looks great for Olave. But if they go to the draft and get one of those rookies, Maybe that changes for him. Puka, you know, you'll see later in the rankings, uh, I'm down on cup two. I, I, I just can't, uh, another Aaron Rodgers factor, one year you get with Stafford past that, I'm not sure. And a lot of people, you know, as much as great and productive as Puka was, a lot of people talk down on him. He wasn't this prospect. And, you know, I, I'd like to think that he's a, a top 12 receiver, no doubt. That's why I have him up here. But, you know, there's cracks in the foundation in this one too. So really to me, those top, six i think are, are pretty cement you know you, you can even make make a case for aj brown you know how bad the eagles looked at the end of the year maybe he has cracks in his foundation too uh but at the same time i think the top five six are, are pretty chalk to me and uh as far as bankability and then you you know with tyreek you have age but he's a great receiver still he's he, he, when he's out there you know what he's going to give you dj moore i think at 15 is a little bit low uh, eight, I, I ride for DJ Moore high. The, the Keenan Allen, that, you know, signing doesn't affect me. I think it kind of draw, draws more attention off more. Really don't have much to throw to. They have a nice nice trio now with Komet, too, as well, to complement those receivers. But, I mean, overall, this is – and right now, you know, we're in March. It's going to change uh, after the draft. We'll see who gets drafted where. But uh, as it stands right now, uh, this is how I, I laid out my rankings for the top 12. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so Brandon, you know, you're seeing these, um, this graphic and these rankings, uh, mm -hmm. pretty fresh as well. What do you see as different from where you would be ranking some of these guys? Are you inputting anyone into this list or taking them out and, and lowering them considerably? 
No, I wouldn't say lowering anybody um, considerably. I do think I agree that there are a couple guys that you're not 100% sure about, you know, the quarterback situation in New Orleans and what, what they're going to do. Chris Olave, I mean, they're known for being a franchise that spreads the ball out to a lot of guys. Um, so, I mean, the talent is there, but it may be just a situation. I'm looking at Brandon Ayuk. I think he may be a guy that could move up this list. It, you know, his rookie contract's coming to an end. He's obviously a number one receiver. Does he go, you know, break out from San Fran and go somewhere and be the guy? If that's the case, I could definitely see him jumping up here. Um, I think DJ Moore, I'm definitely on the bandwagon there. Um, loved him in Carolina. Hated that we traded him. Um, I think, you know, Caleb Williams coming in there, I think is going to be an upgrade over Justin Fields. I'm, I thought they should have kept Fields, but at the end of the day, I do think Caleb is a better quarterback. So I think that offense will flow a little bit better, and he may have potential to move up. Um, I mean, just looking at the list, it's, it's pretty solid for a top 12. I definitely think there could be some movement. You know, um, I think a guy like T. Higgins could maybe find himself in that top 12. He's one of those guys, just like I, you, you know, probably the – second best number two in the league behind Ayuk. You can make a case for Jalen Waddle as well, um, maybe over Chris Olave. But um, other than that, I mean, I think it's a solid list. I think right now for this time of the year, it's a good position. Obviously, there will be some shifts with draft picks and later signings and training cap camp position battles and stuff like that. So, yeah, I I'm fine with it now, but there will definitely be some shifting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know what? Speaking of shifting, speaking of movement, you know, there's there's travel plans that uh, I know some of us are making this this August. And I want to announce on this podcast, we have a new partnership with Expedia.com. And and go to the link uh, in our uh, below this uh, video in the description and click on the Expedia link for um it, there's a promo right now of like 20 percent off travel plans that you make uh before the end of the month uh and utilize that to make your plans to go to canton in august uh 9th through the 13th and you know come join us come come visit us with expedia.com you can book a hotel book your flight and get your car and uh right now they've got that promo of 25 percent off uh so use that link below come to Canton and, you know, make sure you're going to uh, the fantasy football expo.com to get your tickets as well as go to uh, draft night out and get, um, you know, into the Lawrence Lawrence Taylor uh, division to draft with us. But, you know, uh, speaking of traveling and, and going to the, the expo, you know, been banging this drum now for weeks, but, you know, are you guys excited uh, for this this opportunity, Brandon, I know you're gonna be uh, you're kind of uh, doing some traveling that month. What uh, what do you what do you think? What about the expo do you think would be most interesting to you, Brandon? I think just you know the networking opportunities and just being able to see you know the growth of fantasy football and seeing all these guys come together that you know, have a true passion for the game in general, discussing ideas, you know, picking people's brains. I think that would be the most intriguing thing. And then, of course, seeing the NFL Hall of Fame. Um, you know, I've already checked Cooperstown off my list, so I definitely want to make that trip to Canton as well, um, if not for this event, definitely in the future, just because, you know, it's the a, a National Football Hall of Fame. But, yeah, I think that the growth of fantasy has just continued to bring a lot of people together. Yeah, absolutely. Johnny, what's uh, something that's most exciting for you for going to the Expo? So I think uh, I'll echo Brandon and net networking. You know, a lot of times doing this kind of uh, research and podcasting, you don't get a chance to really stop and smell the roses. And, um, you know, sometimes when we come into the studio for five, ten minutes, we get a nice talk about unwinding and, you know, what's going on other than fantasy. So I think as, as, as far as networking professionally and, you know, on a personal level, I'm getting to know the people in the community more. Um, you know, I think uh, I, I'm somebody who's a people person and, you know, I learn a lot from stories and um, per other people's experience too. So as much as I'm here, you know, trying to give advice to people, I'm always soaking up uh, everyone else's advice too. So that's the beautiful thing about fantasy football. It's, uh, you know, you have your own opinions, but they're also molded by others too. 
So I'm looking to continue that, continue growing. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so for, for those watching, listening, if you want to go to Canton in August, you know, click on that Expedia link, save a little bit of money on your travel, and then go to the fantasyfootballexpo.com and get your ticket before April 1st because there will be an increase in ticket prices uh, happening then. But let's shift our focus back to the rankings here and going into uh, 13 to 24. For our audio listeners, we've got Nico Collins, DK Metcalf, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Jalen Waddell, T. Higgins, Drake London, Devontae Smith, Mike Evans, George Pickens, Debo Samuel, and Rasheed Rice. Um, so this one, this question is going to target at uh, Brandon here. Uh, I'm surprised to see Nico Collins so far down in our site rankings at 37. Uh, he seems to be getting a lot of buzz. Why might you drop him into the 30s versus being at 13 like Johnny's got him? Well, I think you have to look at the body of work, and we're going off of one season. So that for me, you know, a lot of the guys will know that first tier have put together consecutive seasons where we know at this point we can trust them, and it's not a flash in the pan. Because, you know, with wide receiver, we see guys spring up and get a 1,000 yards and then completely fall off the face of the earth, and a new guy takes over. Um, and then the fact that, you know, Tank Dell is there and continuing the – draw a lot of targets of his own. Um, so I think, you know, we, we just want to be sure that the Texans are a staple and they're for real. It was a great season. Um, you know, they turned th – Coach D'Amico Ryans deserves all the credit. They turned things around really, really quick, a lot quicker than I think people expected. Um, you know, and I expect them to run the ball a lot more next season too, uh, signing Joe Mixon. So, um, you know, a couple different factors in there. But for me personally, it's just – the body of work like we know you did it for one season but this is the long haul in dynasty this is a marathon can you give me three or four more of those gotcha yeah absolutely so johnny what what are your thoughts going into nico collins at 13 you know what, what what brandon said is real a lot of times you know unfortunately what has happened in the past doesn't uh predict what's going to happen in the future so there's definitely guys that have, have had nice years and fallen off i think this is for nico it was you know, we, we put this in investment in him. I know personally in a dynasty, I think I drafted him in a third round pick, uh, you know, just because there was nobody around him and you were expecting him to be the number one. Uh, they had some rough quarterback play there. Davis Mills, maybe that he didn't find his stride. Who did with Davis Mills, you know? So I think they got their guy in Stroud and, uh, you know, that kind of put all the pieces together for Nico and as well as Tank Dell. Um, I think I might have him on 25. So it's a bad look right now that he's not on top 24. So maybe you can switch him and Rice at 24 and make a case for that. But I, I still think there's there's room for both to excel. I, I do believe that they you know will run more with Mixon. That is a true factor too. Um, but just at the tail end of the playoffs and at the end of the season, just the way that Nico Collins and, and too, Tank Dell was not there. But uh, the way he was producing and had rapport with Stroud, I, I just think this is here to stay. It's we're sticking in it, and I, I do believe, um, you know, as much as there is track record concerns, uh, I'm I'm willing to put a vote of confidence in him after the year that he had, especially how it ended. You know, so uh, I do think the Tank Dell earlier in the offseason, I said I don't know whether he'll be back. It looks like he'll be back healthy, you know, for OTAs. So maybe that chips into Nico's stock a little bit, but. I do think uh, maybe 13 is a little bit bullish, but uh, I think, you know, we'll meet again in the middle here with the, as far as the IDP plus rankings and my rankings. I, I, don't, I don't think I'll have him slip under the top 18, however. Mm -hmm. I think he's cemented in there. Nice. Yeah, you know, and, and then so shifting to, um, you know, the, the two rookies actually we have just below Nico. Um, you know, the site has Marvin Harrison in the top. Well, Marvin Harrison and Malik Neighbors in the top 10. Um, Johnny, what do you think needs to happen? You know, I know that you're low on these guys right now, but what needs to happen for, for them to achieve the rank of the top 10 uh, wide receivers? I guess you could say I'm super low, you know, because of how, how rookies have been over the past couple of years. We've seen Jefferson, Chase come in, take over the league by storm. So it's a young league now. So the fact that I'm 15 and 16 on these guys is, I think, super low. Um, but I, I think it's true. You know, it's, it, there's there's cracks in the foundation with both of these guys, not as far as their pedigree. That speaks for itself. They're generational talents. And that's why I 
you know, to put them over as it is T Higgins and Jay, uh, Jalen Waddle and Devonte Smith, Mike Evans to do that already, I think is, uh, you know, a, a talent to their name to speak on how, how, you know, much of a prospect, highly touted prospect they are. But at the same time, yeah, I, I mentioned before, if Marvin Harrison, there's a real possibility that he could go to the Patriots. And if he's on the Patriots, to me, there's no way he's above Waddle, above Higgins, uh, Mike Evans, uh, you know, and maybe just where they get drafted for once, you know, their first contract doesn't mean they'll be there forever. But seriously, another, another, um, you know, bad juju, like how I said before about uh, Garrett Wilson in New York, who's the last, you know, standout wide receiver in fantasy that the Patriots have had. I don't see much changing there as far as coaching. I think that's going to have to happen, you know, at some point. It is a throwing league with the Steelers, my hometown Steelers. I think they're, they're making moves to get away from that run, you know, run the ball all the time and starting to throw the ball more. And I think, you know, number one, you're going to have to hope that he is not on the Patriots. Number two, you're going to have to hope that they get a quarterback that gels well, that can air it out with Marvin Harrison. I think most quarterbacks can, you know, get along with Marvin Harrison. But uh, and number three, you're going to have to see a change in the system, the, the change in the coaches. So all three of those put together, I think, it is a is a tough recipe to to call Marvin Harrison a top uh, ten, even top eight, right off the bat. So and, and as far as neighbors too, I think uh, you know maybe Harrison gets drafted by the Patriots and the neighbors goes to Arizona and, and he might have the better draft stock at that point. I kind of put these guys together just because they're, they're generational talents. They, this is where I put the rookies coming in. They have potential to be number one absolutely on whatever team they go to. But for me, uh, I'm just going to practice a little bit modesty here and, and not just go so high on them. There's a lot of good receivers here, and and to me, I think even having them at 15 and 16. That's fair. You know, to me, I don't, I don't think they, they need to be any higher than that right now until they get drafted, at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Once the draft happens, we learn a lot. Um, but Brandon, you know, in this pre-draft uh, conversation, what do you what do you think about Marvin Harrison and Malik Neighbors and the situation that needs to arise for them to to move up? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie, man. I think. 15 and 16 for those two guys have never played an NFL game is very, very generous. I mean, you look at some of the guys that they're over right now, like that have put together multiple thousand yard seasons in the NFL. Um, you know, with T. Higgins, Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddle, Mike Evans, one of the greats. Uh, Pickens is a guy that I think could definitely jump up this um this uh list right here. The Steelers have obviously invested heavy in quarterback so i think you know he will be a big beneficiary of that from a pure talent standpoint you know you can put pickings against anybody on this list right now in my opinion um marvin harrison jr and malik neighbors though the upside is insane marvin harrison i mean they're both generational talents from a talent standpoint yeah we could say they they could be top five we don't know we've seen a lot of generational talents come through sports lately it seems like that word that term is getting thrown around a lot more than it used to um so i don't know you know it's kind of losing its merit a little bit but i do think these two guys will be successful there's not a guarantee though that malik neighbors is going to even have the best uh nfl career out of the lsu wide receivers man like you know i love thomas as well but um i think for harrison jr you know i expect him to if he lands with the Patriots, it's going to be tough. Like Johnny said, like, you know, there's not, they're, they're going to have to trade up and get a quarterback. If they can get a Jaden Daniels as well, or, you know, bring in a, a veteran. I know they got Jacoby Brissett, who's kind of been Mr. Reliable. He's solid. I think he's good enough to get Marvin Harrison Jr. the ball. They're not going to win a lot of games, but he could break a thousand yards with Brissett. Um, and then neighbors, yeah, I think it'll be about situation. You know, is he going to play with a quarterback that gets him the ball? If he is with Arizona, you know, is, is it going to be Kyler Murray that's back there slinging the ball? Is he going to be able to stay healthy? You know, there's a lot of factors. But I think, yeah, opportunity and just the situation that they land in are going to be two key factors. Yeah, I think they're both going to be very successful, but it doesn't always happen in year one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right, let's uh, move on to the next slide here where we have – uh, starting off at 25, Tank Dell, Devontae Adams, Christian Kirk, Zay Flowers, Rome Odunze, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Amari Cooper, Stefan Diggs, Jaden Reed, Brian Thomas Jr., 
Jordan Addison and Marquise Brown. I think my pronunciations are starting to get a little bit better. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but I just did. Um, but, uh, you know, targeting, uh, looking at Stefan Diggs here, and Johnny, I, I want your, your thoughts on here. He was once a top five receiver for fantasy, um, but is now in uh, a mid-late 30s by consensus. Um, you know, why, you know, what is it that's brought him down? And is there any way that that changes at all leading into the uh, season? Yeah, I think it could change. You know, it's right now it's a, a bad taste in his mouth and bills for Buffalo. Let's see what happens, in, you know, with the draft. They might draft a rookie themselves. I think they were looking at uh, Brian Thomas themselves, too. I think he ends, ends up going to New Orleans. But, uh, yeah, I think for Stephon Diggs, you know, he he – could still have a great year with Josh Allen. You know, a lot of people were saying maybe he was going to sign with the Steelers and kind of make this like a, a big uh, potential team, you know, a big talent team. Um, you know, to me, I think he can still offer a great season. I think that's in, in the realm of possibilities, even a top 10 season. Um, but we're talking about one season here. He is getting older. Uh, you know, if, if you're in a redraft, he's definitely going to be higher up on the board than 30, maybe pushing the top 20. Um, but to me, I, I think that, you know, there are cracks in the foundation as far as digs, you know, whether, whether it be rookies who they might get in free agency, uh, whether he returns to the bills at all, you know, whether that's a, that's a real possibility that he might not. Um, but yeah, I think this is just due to the age and, and how we saw him decline. You know, there was, there's a case to be made both ways in the first half of the season. He had a great, uh, you know, reliable floor, you know, for, for fantasy managers too, but in the second half of the season, kind of like A.J. Brown, he kind of fizzled. And I think that kind of uh, is, is also on my mind, too, with why he's low. Obviously, on the IDP plus side, you know, we're pretty close there. So that's probably what they're thinking, too. Um, but, yeah, it would not surprise me to see him have another standout year. But past that, I'm not really banking on much more. I think there's kind of a change in the guard. A lot of moves that the Bills have made this season uh, defensively and offensively, too, losing Gabe Davis. Maybe that helps him. But I, I think that's uh, kind of – the writing's on the wall as far as, you know, the, the dynasty they have. They're shaking things up a lot. And, uh, you know, one of those things might be Diggs himself. So, to me, a lot of uncertainty here with Diggs. Gotcha. Uh, you know, what are your thoughts here, Brandon, on Stefan Diggs? And, you know, is age such a factor that he's he couldn't uh, rise up? Uh, or are you kind of looking at maybe he's too high right now? Yeah, I think, honestly, I think the age did play into a factor with him. I mean, in the second half of the season, his yards after catch really, really plummeted. And that's been one of the trademarks to Diggs' game is when he does get the ball in open space. You know, usually one guy's not bringing him down and he can stretch out those short throws or break the field wide open, you know, deep. Um, I think there was some tension between him and Josh Allen. And, you know, it, it carried over onto the field. I, I felt like that during the playoffs he disappeared. Um, you know, he there were some crucial third downs where Diggs wasn't even on the field. So that is something to monitor. But I do think that this is going to be a bounce back year for him. I think, you know, he's going to put in extra work and really come back. He's, he's a guy that's very confident and has been made a career out of proving the doubters wrong. You know, he wasn't this first-round top draft pick that everybody knew was going to be a star. You know, he's a grinder. And if you're in Buffalo, you got to grind. You know, that, that's that's all it is up here. You bring your lunch pail, your hard hat, and you come in and put in the work. So I think he comes back. You know, they let Gabe Davis go. So there's going to be a lot of targets up for grabs. Um, some of those are going to go to digs. I do think they add more depth to the receiving room. Maybe not in the first round. You know, there are some more um, pending uh, positions that do need addressing as well. But um, yeah, I think Diggs can still give you a thousand yards. Yeah. So looking at you know the, we're we're now in essentially the wide receiver three range. Um, you know, Brandon, what are some of the names here that you see that stand out to you as possible? Um, you know, diamonds in the rough. You know, where whether it's uh, based off of Johnny's ranking or maybe, but um, you know, IDP plus is a little low too. What are your thoughts on this group? Uh, well, two names, two smaller receivers that I think could absolutely explode. One, Zay Flowers, man. He's just so talented, so skilled, crisp route runner. You know, he's paired with Lamar Jackson coming off his second MVP. We're seeing Lamar. I, I don't think that, you know, we've seen him 
um, have two very, very incredible seasons in the last few years. But I think this is now the standard for Lamar Jackson. I think, you know, he's entered that peak of his prom where, you know, this is what we're going to be expecting from him for the next several years. So I think Zay Flowers will be a big beneficiary. And we saw that play, man, that, you know, he went through, he gets stripped at the one yard line. If that ain't motivation for you to come and kill everything in front of you next season, I don't know what it is, man. I, I think he's going to come back on with a bit of a revenge tour. And then Hollywood Brown, man, getting picked up by the Chiefs. Nobody's talking about this pickup, man. This is insane right here. Like, Brown, they haven't had a, a speedster like this, really, that has the hands and the speed and the route running ability to match. And I'm not comparing him to Tyreek Hill. I'm not even saying they're in the same mold. But from a speed and talent and reliable hands aspect of things, this is the best receiver they've had in quite some time. And he's still... Very young in his playing days, you know, not a lot of wear and tear. He succeeded in Arizona. He was really good in Baltimore as well. You know, he's been a reliable pass catcher with less talent around him. And now you're going to team him up with Patrick Mahomes. Uh, yeah, I just think he's going to make a huge jump. And I could definitely see him, see him finishing top 20 at least in fantasy as far as production this year. Nice, nice. So, so back to you, Johnny. Like looking at this uh, list of guys, you know, I know that you set the rankings, but do you see any potential sleepers down this this far down? All over the all over the map, man. I mean, this could go a lot of different ways. Tank Dell, definitely. I said before, it could be in the top twenty four. Um, you know, Devonte Adams still, you know, stud, uh, even at thirty one years old. I still expect him to have a great year. So you got to make a tough decision if you're trying to win now or, you know, trying to have longevity over the next five or 10 years with that pick Christian Kirk. I mean, you know, now they get Gabe Davis, they lost Ridley. Uh, you know, I, I think he gets a, gets a lot of targets there, a lot of volume. It's he was off to a really nice pace before injury struck him. So I think Christian Kirk, just the volume, um, you know, may, maybe that's even low at 27 uh, for Christian Kirk. Zay Flowers, I do like, I, I do hear what Brandon's saying on him and he did have a really nice rookie year. Uh, and if he does that, repeats it, then, um, you know, definitely he could move up in my rankings. But again, going back to that, who is the you know number ones they've had there in Baltimore? And this is Lamar Jackson at his best two two uh, MVP season. So, you know, maybe he stretches it for a third. And this is the you know, I'm not expecting Lamar Jackson to, to crash. But at the same time, this is the peak it gets, I think, for uh, maybe Zay, Zay Flowers gets a little bit more volume next year. But they do spread the ball around a lot. Now they have Derrick Henry, too. So that a little worries me a little bit with Flowers. Um, and Roma Odunzi, another rookie there. I, I just don't know where he's going to land. If he goes to the Chargers, maybe I'd move him up a little bit. We expect him to be a great you know, uh, wide receiver, standout wide receiver himself. Then it comes to Jack Jackson Smith and Jigba. Um, you know, whether it be Geno Smith for another year and then Sam Howe after that. Uh, it's still a cr crowded you know, uh, wide receiving group there. Um, I think, you know, Zay Flowers, Tank Dell, those guys to me have, have surpassed him and, and Smith and Jigba. You know, maybe it, it doesn't hit with Seattle. Maybe maybe he does. And he steps over uh, Metcalf a little bit. Lockett's kind of still there this year. So it still puts a ding in, you know, his value for this year. But over the long run, he could be great still. Still 22 years old, young. Um, Amari Cooper, I think, is still a great receiver at 29 years old. Crisp route runner doesn't have to really have all the speed. You know, I don't think uh, age really saps him too much. Um, Jaden Reed, I've been hyping him up all year. We're dead tied 33 and 33. That's a good spot for him. I think he's the, the wide receiver to own there in Green Bay. Um, and then, yeah, definitely Marquise Brown. Uh, he can make a case to go higher than 36. Definitely had to include him on this top th uh, 36 list. I still like Rice Moore a little bit there. I still think, uh, you know, when we look at the numbers of Marquise Brown, he he was a high vo uh, volume receiver in, in uh, I'm sorry, in Arizona, but I, I just don't know if he's going to be needed that much there. You asked me before on a podcast if Mike Evans went to uh, Kansas City, would that make his value better? I, I said no. So that's kind of like my mindset here with Marquise Brown is he's a great player. And, uh, you know, maybe there are games he has six to eight catches. I don't think it's 10 anymore like it was in Arizona. Uh, I just don't think he's needed that much. And, you know, at the same time, he is a burner, absolutely. And it does take uh, space away from attention off of Rice. So Rice is, has had, you know, the rapport this year. I'm still a little bit high on him um, compared to Marquise Brown. But 
at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if it's middle of next year and we have Marquise Brown higher than Rice even because the potential definitely is there with Marquise Brown. So um, that's where I'm thinking right now. That's where my mind's at. But I still think a lot of these guys can definitely like Christian Kirk. You know, if you get him this late, that's a great pick. So some of these guys uh, definitely have the, the trajectory, the potential to, to rise up the rankings real fast. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so let's look at our final slide here. The, um, you know, 37 to 50 uh, rankings. We got Deontay Johnson, Chris Goodwin, or Chris Godwin, uh, Cooper Cup, Terry McLaurin, Jacoby Myers, Keenan Allen, Cortland Sutton, DeAndre Hopkins, Calvin Ridley, Marvin Mims, Troy Franklin, Josh Downs, and then at the bottom of the list here, we got Gabe Davis and then Christian Watson to round out the 50. Uh, so, you know, kind of looking at Keenan Allen here, and I'm going to uh, send this question to you, Brandon. Uh, Keenan Allen last year finishes the wide receiver eight in PPR with the Chargers. Now he's on the Bears. Um, what outcome could help him this year to move up these rankings? Yeah, I think just how quick he can get adjusted to this new system that he's in, how quick he can build chemistry with whoever the quarterback will be in Chicago, I think will be the biggest thing. You know, he was a reliable option for a decade in San Diego, built chemistry with Phillip Rivers and, you know, carried that over um, with, um, gosh, what his name slips me. Um, what's the Chargers quarterback? Uh, I forget Herbert. his name. Herbert, yeah, Justin Herbert. He built that chemistry with Justin Herbert as well. Um, so now he goes and pairs up with another young quarterback. So it's something that he's done. You know, he was there for Herbert's rookie year, built with him. And, you know, people may knock him for the age, but he is coming off of a career year uh, last season. Um, had a really, really stellar year for a Chargers team that underachieved. So, yeah, I think it'll just be how quick he can adjust um, to that new offense, that new scheme and built chemistry with whoever the quarterback will be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so Johnny talking Keenan Allen here, you know, obviously age is an issue, um, but could he come in and be that safety blanket for, let's say it's Caleb Williams and the bears. Definitely. I mean, Keenan Allen's still one of the greatest uh, route runners at 31 years old. Um, another guy who kind of, like I mentioned, uh, Maury Cooper doesn't really need the high end, you know, blazing speed to do his damage. So I think this is really a good uh, signing for the, the Bears, specific, specifically as a team. They If they are going to get Williams, which is, you know, all of our assumptions that uh, they did build a nice nice uh, grouping around him, you know, gr solid core. So I think uh, Keenan Allen is definitely a possession, uh, sol possession receiver, solid route runner, definitely can be that security blanket. Um, maybe that that you know uh, opens things up for DJ Moore too uh, to get his deep shots. Uh, maybe the volume comes down for DJ Moore. That might be a byproduct. Um, you know, we'll see if Keenan Allen can stay healthy. He's had a bunch of question marks staying healthy in his career. Uh, you know, I, I don't think this is uh, gonna. Uh, it's gonna go you know both ways. I don't think one guy is gonna be the alpha and the other one's gonna kind of settle. Uh, you know, l last year there was Darnell Mooney there, and he was really the number two receiver and really didn't have much value at all. I don't think that's the case. I think they brought Keenan Allen here to throw him the ball. And I just think from an overall standing point of, on, on offense for the Bears, it was a really good signing. Uh, another guy who in redraft is going to be much higher than 42. He's a solid number two receiver, you know, probably not on that waddle level that we were talking before. The best two, number two in the league, him or IU, you know, not up in there anymore, but definitely somebody who can still do damage any given week. Uh, and consistent. He's a consistent player. I think he's going to help uh, the quarterback out tremendously. Absolutely. And this is a loaded. This is loaded. I mean, we're talking about Keenan Allen, 31 years old at 42, you know, in dynasty rankings. I mean, there's there's guys on this list that I absolutely love. And it's just a deep uh, wide receiver class. It was last year, too. And, you know, these rookies make it only deeper. So, you know, a lot of these guys we're looking at, they, we're talking 40s here, and there's some solid players. But I think it's just a tribute to how deep the position is as a whole. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, as we wrap this up, uh, my last question here and to you, Johnny, um, looking at Jacoby Myers, there's a big uh, drop when you go to IDPplus.com in that ranking at 76. What are you seeing in him, his situation that keeps him in the conversation for a, a wide receiver four for fantasy? 
So we're basically talking about wide receiver fours right now, but I kind of see him as a wide receiver three. Uh, he had the stats to back it up this year in, in 16 games played. He had eight, 807 yards, eight touchdowns, which was a selling point for him, uh, and also 71 catches. He does also uh, show an, an ineptitude in uh, the r- rushing game, too. He had four rushes, two touchdowns. He throws the ball. He was a former uh, quarterback, I think, in college. So he's, he's you know on those trick plays, too. Um, you get a little bit of value on that, but Jacoby Myers, I, I liked him a lot in New England, and you know he kind of was that that good New England receiver, um, you know that, that's far and few in between, and he took his talents to Las Vegas and kind of backed it up. So uh, for me, I like this guy a lot. Uh, he compliments the, uh, um, Adams really well over there in Vegas, and I think you, Gardner Minshew is certainly an upgrade. I think that's the avenue they'll go over O'Connell. And with better quarterback play, I just assume that, you know, he'll get better and take that next step. So, um, you know, multifaceted player, he, the, the targets are there. He had 106 targets this season, 2021 uh, with the New England Patriots. He had 126. So he's a vo- volume receiver. He's not the biggest receiver to go up and get it, but he, he does have good speed too. Only 27 years old. And uh, I, I expect the Raiders to be throwing the ball a lot. So Jacoby Myers, I think, you know, he's going to, ascend through the rankings even more as, as the season approaches. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so, you know, to you, Brandon, uh, kind of as, as my final question here, what are your thoughts on Jacoby Myers? Are you as high and in line with, uh, what Johnny thinks, or are you bumping him down? No, I like Jacoby a lot, man. I like the versatility. He had some huge games last year. Um, and he's playing against Devontae Adams, who, you know, number twos again with Devontae Adams, man, it's tough because that guy hauls in a lot of targets. But Jacoby Myers, is, you know, he's carved out a really nice role in Las Vegas. He's continued to be a reliable. You know, he you can start him if you need to. Um, he catches touchdowns a lot more than some of these guys that are ranked higher than him. And I do think with Garner Mitchell, like, yeah, they might not make the playoffs, but they're going to be slinging the rock. And I think Myers will get even more targets than he had last season. So I, I, I like him a lot. Um, one guy that I do think can move up who I'm huge on, I covered him in North Dakota State when I was out there, um, is um, goodness, Christian Watson. Um, I just think, you know, with his size, his speed, and he's a touchdown machine, uh, the only thing that's been hampering him right now is a hamstring injury that's cost him some games. But I think from a talent standpoint, he should be the guy in uh, Green Bay. I think he's built a rapport with the quarterback. And, you know, I'm excited to see him have a bounce back year between him and Jordan Love. I know they've got some other young receivers as well, but they really, really are high on Christian Watson. And I think he could be that next superstar in Green Bay. Nice. Nice. Well, there, there you have it. We've gone through 50 wide receivers and we've broken the seal and gotten veterans and rookies together so we can start to really see how this season is going to start looking um you know we still have the nfl draft to look forward to and that's going to change up the whole landscape uh for every position uh and and so you know we're gonna we're starting this journey we started with wide receivers um and we're going to continue uh to other position groups that make sense you know some of we might get into some idp but probably for a little while we're going to be uh, touching on these offensive positions because it's just a little bit easier to to know um, before the draft and, and everything. But uh, don't take that as we don't uh, we won't be back to IDP. Um, but with that, let's wrap this up and you know give our hosts a, a chance to talk about themselves for a minute. Brandon, I'm going to go to you. Tell everyone where they can find you and what kind of content you're putting out. Absolutely. You guys can find me on all social media platforms at Brandon Lee TV. Right now we are in March Madness. So a lot of women's basketball content going out on my platform and definitely check out the podcast as well as the fantasy football content articles that we're doing with IDP plus lots of good stuff. Awesome. And Johnny. Yeah. So find me on Twitter at Johnny freaking F1. Uh, like I said, check out IDP Plus Trends, the show I've been doing with Average Joe's Fantasy Football, covering all latest uh, trends in the NFL, even in offseason, too. Like Brandon said before, IDP Plus, we don't sleep over here. 
So take advantage. If you haven't checked out those videos, go ahead and do so. I appreciate your uh, follows and I'll show you some love back. Um, and go Duquesne. I'm watching Duquesne. I went there two years. So they're playing a couple hours. March Madness is on. Enjoy the games. What a time. Baseball's yeah. coming up. A lot of sports coming up right at you. So don't sleep on football, though. This is where uh, money's made. This is where you're uh, where you get the best value. So thanks for reviewing and thanks for listening. There we go. Uh, if you want to follow me uh, at Nate Sheet on Twitter, but highly recommend just following the main account at IDP underscore plus. That's where all of our content comes through, uh, whether it be YouTube or the website, articles, a uh, ton of great stuff on uh, that Twitter uh, account. Uh, but make sure you know you're on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel. Hit the little bell. Make sure you get notified whenever we have a new video because they're coming out constantly. We've got uh, a ton of great shows that come out weekly. We've got a ton of great uh, shorts that come out that kind of clip out of our shows uh, as well as we have more shows in development. There's going to be just a ton more coming. Super uh, excited for where we are at as a brand. Um, but with that... Uh, I, I want to thank you all for joining us as well as thanks to the host for coming on and providing this content. We will uh, see you next week. Thank you for watching this IDP guys video. If you like this content and you want more fantasy football content, click here. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos to help you master your IDP league, click here to subscribe.